The idea is if you have a piano hammer, you've got the core in there. Over time, the felt wears away, and so this just gets, is just gone. So the hammer, you know, starts, starts out like a hammer and then it's flat, and then, and so rather than just hitting right, you know, at the very crown of the hammer, which is what you want, it's this entire surface from there to there that's actually, it's kind of like slapping the string rather than a nice, you know, a nice ping, which is what you want. So, uh, if we back up a little bit and talk about how, how, how they're manufactured, this wooden molding, the, the core, can you guys all see this? It starts as just one long strip of wood. So it's one, what, what they do is they, they manufacture one giant hammer and then cut it into, you know. So like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cut it into 88 pieces. So it's, it's one, long, one long strip of wood that you have the, the molding like that. They take a big square piece of felt and then push it down with big clamps and glue it onto the molding and, and often they'll even put staples on it. Okay, so there's their staple that goes all the way through to hold it in place. And, and if you look closely, you can see what I'm talking about with how, how the layers of felt are wrapped around the molding. Okay. So what that means is this is comprised of layers after layer after layer of felt that go in kind of that rainbow shape, right? And then these outer layers, I guess, you know, right here, it starts here, starts, and then it gets, it's cut off, and then it continues down here to the other side, right? Because all of that has been taken off. The idea then is to Let's go back to the hammer. The idea then is to return, is to find that, that final layer that ends right here. You want one continuous layer of felt. That's the, that's the idea of, of reshaping hammers. So, You'll see, and you don't, you don't necessarily go all the way back here. I, I generally start my reshaping right here, and you'll see that in a minute. Okay, so the, the hallmarks of a properly shaped hammer are, well, we can, we can start by saying it has the correct shape. And I don't know how much of that, I, I really don't know how much of that is is because it objectively gives a better tone and how much of it is just tradition i i don't know i anyway the correct shape is well of course it varies from one side you've got bigger hammers on the bottom and smaller hammers on top it's not too fat so it's not like egg shaped but it's also not too skinny you don't want a missile right somewhere kind of in between, sort of an oval, rounded shape. Another one is symmetrical. Symmetrical. Okay. Is that on every axis? No, not on every axis. So what that is referring to is, if going back to if you have the core here, you what you don't want is a hammer that, uh, I didn't exaggerate that as much as I wanted to, but you can see the crown of the hammer, at least how I drew it, is like right about there. If you were to draw kind of a invisible line through there, you want the crown of the hammer to be right in the center, to be, to you, you want that invisible line that goes through the molding to bisect the crown of the hammer, okay? Then, we want 
no string cuts. Want to remove those all together. Another one would be number four would be smooth. Attractive. Attractive, you know, professional looking finish. We just want it to, we want a customer to open it up and, and look at the hammers. And even if they don't necessarily know what they're talking about or know what they're looking at, we want even an amateur to, to be able to open it up and look at their piano and say, wow, yeah, that looks, that looks professionally done. And then I guess, I guess you could say, you could say a fifth, you could say consistent. Okay, meaning from, from one side to the other, it should just look awesome. We have these different size, different length little sticks there. And this just, this just really helps. You don't absolutely have to do them, but it makes it a whole lot easier. And then we have these reusable little ties the whole thing. Yeah. You're tying it to the rest rail, right? Uh-huh. The reason that we're kind of straightening them out a little bit is we don't want, you know, again, if you're, if you've got your hammers, you can do this for the camera and you can see it, if you've got your hammers like that and you straighten that out, you know, it's going to be straightened like this and then if you straighten it later, then your angle is going to be off. All of your strokes with the thing should be straight. So, so we're not gonna we're not gonna like round it off like that. But we're gonna go straight, and then change the angle straight, change the angle straight, change the angle straight. And then the last one I'm gonna do is about right there. I'm never gonna go all the way perpendicular with the molding. I, one one thing that I'll say about consistency is what you do not want to do. Do not. Do one section right here until completion, and then move on to this section until completion, and then move on to this section. Like, don't do that. Because it will not, I promise you, it will not be consistent. And then I'm gonna push the felt to the other side of the crown, and you just keep pushing the, your little felt shavings back and forth over, over the crown. When, when beginning, what I want you to do is I want you to practice. Don't, don't try and go fast. Just go straight, 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 straight. Until you kind of get your muscle memory to where, to where you can just you know, be sure that you're going straight on each stroke. And you know, that, you know you're being consistent when you have that straight line there of, of felt. And it's, it's a weird thing that, that you, you keep doing this, and even though you're never really touching the crown, you're, you're never really sanding straight on the crown and the hammer, you just keep doing it, and eventually the string cuts, which are of course centered on the crown, they eventually disappear. Okay, let's look at our progress. Okay, make sure the symmetry is good. Make sure I'm not. That looks good. Can you see that on the camera? Things are things are pretty much the same on one side and the other. So I'm not favoring a lot of times, especially when first starting out. You, it's it's easier it's easier to pull, like you just have more muscle pulling than you do pushing, and so a lot of times. The, the one side will be thinner where you where you pull, so you kind of have to learn to be a little bit more um, careful, a little bit more gentle on the pulling than you do the pushing in order to keep it symmetrical. So the temptation that I'm talking about is is well, we've got to we know we're done when the string cuts are gone, right? So the temptation is well, let's just kind of get rid of those string cuts. So just 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 have faith that, that as you as you keep doing your your straight cuts up to what is that? You're not going, you know, if this is if this is what like zero degrees and this is ninety degrees, you know, you're probably not going 
fully to 90 degrees, but you're going to maybe, I don't know, 80 degrees or 85 degrees or whatever. Just have faith that as you end on your 85 degrees, it'll eventually make the string cuts go away. Well, because if you do the 90, then you're just perpetuating this problem. That's right. right. That's exactly right. Exactly. And as you get closer, you want to kind of keep checking your, your symmetry, keep checking your shape, and you kind of have to, for shape, I don't know, do you have any thoughts on that, Mike, on, on shape, like how to, how to gauge if your shape is correct? Well, there's two things that I, I look for, is just that consistency. Mm -hmm. from, from this side to this side, you're looking at a consistent um, line that gets smaller as you go, but you want that, that top to end up being, because your strings are all the same height, you want that top to be all the same height. And then as far as shape, I just like to, to follow what was there before, and if you're consistent the way that you've been doing it, then you're going to actually follow the shape of the original the hammer. And so I, I kind of let the piano dictate what, um, what the shape's going to be. And on some hammers, there, there starts to be kind of a little, you know, like on babies, their hair has a little wisp, like in the middle. <laughs> yeah. that, that's kind of what starts to form is this little baby wisp in the center. And you know that you're you know that you're on the right track if that little baby wisp forms in the center all across the crown, and and if yeah yeah the, yeah the little, yeah exactly, and if that little baby wisp starts to form on one side or the other of the of the very center, you know you're being a little bit too strong on one side or the other, and you've got to ease up and maybe focus on on uh, the other side. So because we're so close to the to the core up here, I'm I'm just gonna leave the, the cuts. I just don't want to push it too hard. And I'm just gonna kind of turn a blind eye to to the cuts in these top area, this top area. Because I'm just gonna call it like it's the lesser of two evils, right? Having having some cuts in the in the top like five or eight notes is is less evil than having the core exposed and having the wood core be actually the, the part that, that comes in contact with the string. So now here I am going directly over the top to, to just kind of smooth out the baby wisp, right? To get and, professional finish. and just get that professional looking finish, right? <laughs> That's why we want the, we want the tape on the back. The tape on the back, yeah. yeah. I'm, 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 putting, I'm putting pressure, a little bit of pressure anyway, on, on the shoulders of the hammer. So here and here, and just kind of letting it drag right over the top. 